All right, welcome everyone. I'm glad that you found the new classroom location. I think this is going to be better for us anyway. That other room had too much of an echo. It was very noisy and distracting, so I'm glad that we're in here instead. Um, they haven't installed the uh, software I use to record the lectures on our main computer, so there was just some random laptop stuck in the desk here. I don't know whose it is or why it was there, but I'm using it. Hopefully, everything will work OK. I don't know what will pop up on screen. It's not my laptop, so it was just some laptop laying around. It'll be interesting to see if it works. Homework number two is due on Tuesday. I've already gotten some questions about that. It's good that you've already started early. Um, that'll help you out. Um, as a reminder, we've got a quiz coming up on Thursday. And the, uh, the quiz that we're going to have on Thursday includes everything, including uh, Tuesday's class. And so how should you study for that quiz? Um, well, you should definitely review the in-class exercises. And you should be familiar with the homework and how that's solved. You know, if you understand the homework and can solve those problems, then it should be very smooth for you on the day of the quiz. Um, it's also a good idea to buy the textbook and be reading that. And um, of course, paying attention during class, not texting during class. If you pay attention during class and are staying off the phone, then that's another good way of um, preparing for the quiz. So any questions about the announcements? I'll give you homework three when we get together next time, after you've already submitted homework two. All right, well, we are going to continue about kinetics. And I sent out a message that you could bring your computer with you today. I'm curious to know how many people have a computer with them. All right, a handful of students, you've got the computer. The rest of you are going to watch me doing it rather than doing it yourself. Either one's OK, but you definitely need to know how to do this stuff for the reactors assignment that's going to be coming up. So uh, hopefully this recording works, because uh, that'll be a good way for you to access how to do this stuff later on. Um, if you don't absorb it all 100% today. All right. Any questions before we move? Does everyone have the notes, the in-class exercise, and then returning the old in-class exercise from last time? All right. We're talking about kinetics today. And we've touched on kinetics previously. It helps us to understand how quickly a reaction goes and then also what influences the rate of the reaction. And uh, we defined R as the reaction rate in the previous class. And we said that in a zero order reaction, what happens is that the change of concentration over time is constant. And so we're always either gaining or losing the same amount during a zero order reaction. And here's a figure that shows the, uh, the slope of a zero order reaction is linear when we graph time versus amount. And so it's, it's very easy to identify zero order kinetics because you're given some table of data. You're given in one column time, in another column concentration. And then you can uh, plot it, and you'll have a linear expression when it's time versus amount. Now, what these equations are showing is that if you integrate the expression for the change of concentration with respect to time, then the resultant equation is what we can use for problem solving. And in the in-class exercise today, you're going to use this expression to predict what is the concentration at a certain time. So during the demonstration, I'll go through and do the Excel part on the, uh, on the computer. And then you can use the slope, of the slope of the line. Whoever's computer this is, it looks like it's maybe a pirated copy of Windows. So that's kind of funny. <laughs> All right, let me close that. All right, so once you have the slope of this line, the slope of this line is the k that you use in this expression. And here you can see the amount is going up. So this is a production reaction, which means we have a positive K. And so your concentration at some time will be greater than the initial concentration. C naught, this C sub zero means the starting concentration at the beginning, at time zero. 
And so you can find the C sub T, or the concentration at some time, by the initial concentration plus whatever growth or accumulation occurred inside of the reactor. Okay. So that's our integrated rate law for zero order reactions. Any questions about that? First order reactions means that how much of something there is influences the rate of the reaction. So here, the reaction rate R, it's not just a constant. There is a constant that we have to find, but how quickly the concentration is changing depends partly on the constant and then partly on how much of the concentration there is at any given time. So in this graph, I've already linearized it, but before you do that, if you just had a simple graph of time versus concentration, we'd see that it's going down like this. Does anybody remember the analogy I gave about why the reaction rate is decreasing over time? Similar to human behavior? Yeah. Rapidly. Good. Yeah. So here at, at, at zero, at the beginning, we have a lot. And so the slope is steep. We're using it quickly when we have a lot. But when the amount starts to go down, we have less, and so we use it more slowly to conserve, maybe. In the case of a biological organism, um, the organism has less respiration. It's moving less because there's less food available. If, it, if it's a substrate that it's utilizing, like a food source, then its rate of consumption decreases when it has less food. So, here we've linearized it by taking, you can see here on the y-axis, the logarithm, the natural log of the amount. And so then it becomes linear. And the slope of that line is the k-value that we're going to use. Again, if we take the integral from the initial concentration to the concentration at some time, this becomes what we use for problem solving. If we want to find out uh, how long it's going to take, for a certain reaction, you would use this expression and solve for T. If you wanted to find out how long from the concentra concentration to go from one value to another, then you'd use that form of it. Or we can write it a different way if you just take the natural log of both sides so that the C and the C naught are no longer in the natural log, then we have E to some power. And so you'd use this to find out the concentration at a certain time for first order kinetics. So this, these equations, these two, are not to be used for first order kinet, uh, for zero order kinetics. These equations are not interchangeable. This should only be used when you're sure it's zero order kinetics. And likewise, these two equations only apply if the kinetics are definitely first order kinetics. Now, a bit about growth versus uh, decline reactions. The K value is positive when the system is increasing in concentration, if it's a production reaction. And then K will be a negative value if the amount is decreasing. And that's what we'll see in the uh, example that we were. And finally, uh, here's our second order reaction. Um, second order, the linearity exists when we have not just the amount. It's not the natural log of the amount, but now it's one divided by the amount to linearize the system. And so our original data would, would have a nonlinear shape. We'll look at that using Excel. But the change in concentration with respect to time is our rate constant, is our rate of the reaction, and it's K times C squared. And so that's why this is called second order kinetics, is because it really, really has an impact what the concentration is. The rate of the reaction is very dependent on the concentration. So when we were looking at the previous slide, concentration does affect the rate of the reaction, because it's K times C. You know, that's the, the rate of reaction R. But in this next slide, since it's squaring the C, 
you can see now here it's C squared. That tells you that the concentration is very important for dictating the rate of the reaction. This reaction will go very, very much faster when there's a high concentration than when it has a low concentration. It can swing back and forth very quickly depending on how the concentration changes. And so if we go through that same integration process, we end up with the equation we use for problem solving. You can use this to find out what is the concentration C at some time T when you have an initial concentration C naught and K is the rate constant. So if we want to write C naught means the initial concentration So C naught is the initial concentration. C is the concentration constant. C is the concentration at time T. And T is just some certain time that we're interested in. Okay? So any questions so far about that? What we're going to do now is we're going to go through the uh, in-class exercise. And I mentioned if you've got your computer with you, that's great. I, I, uh, I prefer it if you bring the, the um, computer because that, you know, when you do something yourself, you remember it better than if you just see it. But you're going to get the uh, hands-on opportunity eventually. So either way really is okay. I'm going to start up Excel. And if you have your computer with you, do the same thing. Let's start up Excel. Looks like whoever owns this computer is using version 2007. Maybe you have 2010 or 2013. It's okay. It doesn't matter which. We're going to start on problem one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, I'm going to do the Excel part of it, and then you should do the, uh, what are you looking for? I'm going to do the Excel part, which is part A. And then I'll add the best fit line part B. And then you'll use the data that's on the screen to solve for the amount of time required for the oxygen concentration to hit 0.5 milligrams per liter. So first we just have to put in some column headers here, time in seconds, and then concentration in milligrams per liter. All right. And just type in the data. We have uh, zero is our time, 15. Yeah. Excuse me? OK, they're up there. Go ahead and take one. Is there not anymore? Here. All right, so concentration initially is 9.5, then 8.375, and 2.75. Is there a question in the back? Any questions so far? Okay, so we've got the data there, and uh, we're going to want to make a graph. And this is important. There's lots of different kinds of graph in Excel. What we want is called a scatter plot. And you see over here, scatter, that's the best for what we want to do. So let's choose, we're going to insert this scatter plot where it's not connecting the dots with the uh, like, we don't need all these lines. We don't want it to connect our dots. Just the data points themselves is the best. It automatically takes a guess about what you want to graph. Just on a matter of principle, I always uh, double check to make sure it selected the right data. So first of all, let's edit this series. Okay, for the x values, we want it to be time. So it has time for the horizontal axis. And then for the y values, it should be concentration. So it got that right. Okay. 
I'm going to delete this so that it's a little bit easier to see. Delete those lines. Those are useless. Uh, let's add axis titles. Okay. So here's the concentration. in milligrams per liter. And anytime you do a graph for the homework, be sure that you definitely, you should include these axis titles. You won't get full credit if you don't put in an axis title. Even if you end up calculating the right answer, uh, the graphs need to be formatted properly. Okay, so over here, the uh, time is in seconds. All right. So we can see the concentration is decreasing over time. We already knew that from the tabular data. Uh, so part A, use MS Excel to graph concentration versus time. That's what we've got, concentration versus time. And I'm going to change the title of this just to uh, problem one in, in class exercise four. Okay, the next thing is we want to put in a best fit line. And so a line that's going to try and minimize the distance between the points and the line. And that's easy to do in Excel. All we have to do is right click on one of these data points, add trend line, and then we're going to choose the linear. We want it to show the equation. And the reason why we need it to display the equation is that's where we're going to get the k value from. It'll be the slope of the line. And then display the R squared is useful because sometimes if we have different graphs, we have to pick the one that has the highest R squared, the one that best fits linear behavior. All right. Okay, so part B says add a best fit line to the data to find the rate constant K. The rate constant here is 0 0.075. So that's the K value you're going to use in the calculations. So for part C, you're going to let, for part C, K equals negative 0 0.075. Does anyone know what the units are on K? The units are going to be whatever we need because the form of the equation we're solving is C equals C naught plus K times T. So T is going to have units of seconds. And we want to add it together because the concentration is going to have units of milligrams per liter. So we have to have K have units of something so that when we multiply it by seconds, it is milligrams per liter. So it's going to be, I think, milligrams per liter divided by seconds. And so that we multiply the time by that, it'll cancel out the seconds. Right. Okay. So I'm going to turn you loose on part C. Find out uh, how long, what is the time required for when the concentration will be 0 0.5 milligrams per liter. All right. Okay, good. As I was uh, circulating around, it seemed like uh, almost everyone had already calculated 120 seconds. And so the way we do that is rearrange this main equation to solve for T, our original starting equation. So it's going to be the difference in the concentrations divided by K. One thing I'll point out to you is in some books, that instead of saying C, they'll say C sub T. Why do you think they put that subscript of T there? Right. It means that the concentration at some time T, whatever this time is, that's the concentration at the time. It's, it's a matter of uh, formatting, really. So we divide the difference in the concentrations by the K value, being careful to put the negative sign there, because this is a decrease reaction. It's consuming whatever the reactant is. And it takes 120 seconds to do that. Okay? 
So any questions on this first one? How many of you feel pretty confident that you could put together the graph and find the, the slope of the line? Is that basic stuff by now? You've used Excel a lot, I hope. Yeah? The best fit line? Sure. Yeah, so once you do the data, once you've got, let me delete that. Okay, so we'll get rid of that. Usually you just delete. Okay, so if you right click on a data point, then this menu comes up. And what we want to do is add trend line. Now, it may be a little bit different if you have like uh, Excel 2013, because this version that's on the screen right now is Excel 2007. But if you right click, you should have a menu and add trend line is what you want to do. And you want to choose linear, display equation, and display R squared. And then that gives us what we need. Once in a while, you won't see enough of the slope of the line. See how it says 0 0.075? You may want to see more digits. And in that case, if you right click on format uh, trend line, then here is, where is it? Yeah, here. Okay, so here this increases or decreases the number of digits that are shown. Oh, I guess it's not going to work. Anyways, I'm getting confused from the different versions. Oh, okay, here it is, number. So it's showing two digits right now. If we wanted to see five, then that would give you, you know, maybe if you want more precision because it's not exact like .075 then you can expand or decrease the number of digits that are shown in the label there. All right, so let's start a new sheet and start on uh, problem number two. Problem two. In this one, anybody want to guess what the kinetics are? It doesn't say, but we did zero order kinetics on the first one, and we've got three problems, and so maybe it's a little bit of a hint there. What we have is a pollutant is removed from water, and here is the data for it. We're going to go through and try and find out, is it zero order kinetics or is it first order? And the way to do that is to graph it both ways and find out for which one does it look more linear. So let's start with that. We've got time in hours, and then we're going to have concentration in milligrams per liter. Okay, so our time 0, 12, 24, 48. 96 and 144. And our concentration, 220, 190. Thank you. Awesome. Yep. Perfect. All right. It doesn't say what the reaction is, does it? We don't know if it's a biological reaction. We don't know if it's a chemical reaction. It really doesn't matter, as long as we know the concentration of whatever it is. Whatever this, whatever this mass is, we know how it's changing over time. So we can characterize the kinetics without knowing the specifics about what is the reaction. Okay, so for zero order, we're going to see if it's zero order by doing the same thing that we did previously. So we're going to insert a scatter plot and move that over here. I like it better, actually, when it doesn't automatically choose the data for me. Select data. I want to add a series where my x value is time in hours. And then the y value is going to be concentration in milligrams per liter. And let's see how that looks. If it's already linear, then that means it's zero order kinetics. It's not. See how it's curving downward? So this is not zero order kinetics. OK. So I'm going to change the layout of that. Um, oh, I'm being 
too picky. I'll leave it. All right, delete this. I'm going to put in the axis labels. So I want to right click and, uh, okay, here it is, axis titles, horizontal, put on the vertical. Okay, so this one is time in hours. And then on the vertical axis is concentration in milligrams per liter. I'm going to right click on one of the data points to try and add my trend line and show the R squared and the equation. So as you can see, it doesn't fit very well. You know, the true linear behavior, there's some gaps there between where the, uh, the linear line is and the existing, I'm going to push delete, all right. And I'm going to put a title on that. I'm going to call this one um, for the chart title. This would be if it was zero order, zero order. It's not, but this is graphed according to if it was zero order. So I'm going to copy this and then make some changes to see if it's first order. All right. So maybe just to emphasize the fact that it's not zero order, zero order, and I'd say question mark, no. <laughs> Let's see where. All right. So now I'm going to copy, and I don't know if you use keyboard shortcuts, but you can do control C to copy, or you can just do the uh, normal copy paste thing. Yeah, okay. That's a good one. Copy, now down here to paste. Now what I want to do is I want to have another column. This one was the concentration. I'm going to have this one be the natural log of the concentration. Okay, so equals ln and then of this concentration data. Okay, and uh, I don't have to type the formula every time. There's a couple things I can do. I can either drag this down. You already know that from Excel. Or you can just double click on that corner and it'll automatically fill as, as far down as there's data for. So I'll just double click in the edge. It did the calculation all the way down. So now here, I want to change it so that on the vertical axis, I don't want it to be concentration. On the vertical axis, I want it to be the natural log of the concentration. So I'm going to drag this blue box to the next row, and then it will change the graph automatically, including, let's see, put it in a weird spot, but here's my uh, equation for the line. And uh, this one is our first order. And the answer, yes, it, it, to, is it first order? It's uh, yes. OK, now this was time in hours. And then we need to put in the label here was uh, concentration, milligrams per liter. And here, the concentra it's the natural log of the concentration. So any questions on how these graphs were made or why we're doing it a certain way? Any questions so far? What's useful about this equation? Okay, that's right. Now it says 0 .011. This is one of those instances where maybe I want to increase the number of digits that are shown. Make sure it's not something else. So let me format the label. I'm going to go into number. Instead of just two decimal places, I want to see to four decimal places. Okay. Well, it is really just 0 .011. I have a zero there as well. So it wasn't rounding off or something. Part B said find the rate constant. So from that, from that graph, why don't you write down what is the rate constant on the paper? Okay, 
And then, oops. Part C, how long will it take for the pollutant concentration to equal 30 milligrams per liter? Now, I've given you two equations at the bottom of the page. One that's in the form of the natural log and one that uses the E expression. Use one of those two to solve for part C. And then when you're done with that, solve part D. And I'm going to be circulating around to see how it goes. Okay, we need to move on. We've only got 10 minutes to do the last one. Any questions on how we got 181 hours for the time or 58.8 milligrams per liter for the uh, concentration after five days? All right, so we've done zero order kinetics. We've done first order kinetics. Let's try a problem with second order kinetics. In part three, which is on the back of the paper, uh, it says uh, the decay of nitrogen dioxide into NO and O2 is illustrated with the data provided. So we've got another table. We're going to be typing in data. There's a pattern here. All right, so time in minutes, and we've got the concentration in milligrams per liter. And uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And it's 190.91. 83.33, 76.92, and 61.43, and 66.67. Okay, what we want to do is, number one, find K. We want to find the K value. Why do you think it's important for us to know the rate constant? Thank you. All right. Why is the K value important? What have we used it for already? Well, I made all sorts of typos, didn't I? I don't think that that'll have a huge effect, but let's get it right anyways. All right. Back to the original question. Why do we care about the K value? That's right. Here on the paper, I've given you another formula. This is what we saw on the uh, slide before. It's how we can predict the future. You can only predict the future concentrations if you know the rate constant K. All right, so what we're going to be using is this formula C equals C naught divided by 1 plus K times T times C naught. So we want to find what is K. Since we're short on time, I'm not going to make the formatting pretty. We're just going to try and find that uh, rate constant as quickly as possible. So 1 divided by C is what we're going to have for our operation equals this divided by, I'm sorry, 1 divided by that. All right. So we'll drag it down. Now we're going to insert a scatter plot. Select the data for our x values is time and for our y values is 1 divided by the concentration. All right, so we're going to add the trend line, right click on it add trend line with the equation so we can get the slope of the line. All right, now we have the slope. So the slope of the line on this one is 0 0.001. So that's our K value. And um, The units on that is liters per milligram minute. Our C naught was 100 milligrams per liter. That's the initial concentration at time zero. And the problem is asking uh, at 40 minutes, 
what is the NO2 that remains after 40 minutes? So for T equals 40 minutes, calculate what is the C at that time. Mm -hmm. Before we get back to this one we were just working on, okay, what should be the units of K for first order? The clue uh, for a first order reaction, what the units should be, you know, we're using this equation um, C equals C naught E to the KT. So the units here have to be unitless to use the E function. And so if T, for example, is hours, then the units of K is hours to the minus one. So always, for first order kinetics, the units of K is inverse time. It's either seconds to the minus one or minutes to the minus one, but it's whatever the units of time are that you have for the problem to the minus one power. So that's that's on the first order. I hadn't written it on the board for that example. I, I, I'm glad that you asked. Okay, now back to this one. For the second order kinetics, the uh, concentration is going to be 20 milligrams per liter. Let's look at the data. That's really a surprise. Look at how much it was changing at first. The, uh, in the first minute, it almost lost 10 milligrams per liter just in the first minute. In one minute it went from 100 to 90. And then the next minute it went from 90, 91, down to 83. What we're saying is after 40 minutes, it still has 20 remaining. So what you should see and sort of have a feel for is that as the concentration decreased, the rate of the reaction slowed down a lot. And that's characteristic of second order reactions like this, is when the reaction, when the concentration was high, the reaction was very fast. But as soon as the uh, concentration goes down, the reaction really slows a lot. Uh, second order, is this is second order. That's right. Okay. So before you leave, be sure and uh, put your in-class exercise on the chair there so I can use it to take attendance. Let's just take one final look at the announcements for today to make sure we're all on the same page. Just as a reminder, homework two is due next time we meet in class. It should be on the chair by 12 o'clock. That's when class begins. And then on Thursday, we're going to have a, a brief quiz in class. It should only take 10 minutes, maybe 15 at the longest. And then... Um, you'll have another homework assignment due after the break. So I'll see you on Tuesday, and have a great day.